But the fact that I can see a wolf at all is down to the work of Dr. Claudio Siliero. He and his team have spent 20 years protecting the wolves in the Ballet Mountains, supported by the Born Free Foundation. One of the beauties of uh, Ethiopian wolves is that they are diurnal, so they, they carry on most of the of the activities at daytime, which make them ideal for observation. Is that one? Is that a dog? That? Yes, well spotted. Uh, you're very good, Graham, at this. I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> they are wonderful creatures. Not only that they are beautiful to look at, but they have a fantastic social system. I mean, they, they are solitary foragers. They shouldn't need to live in groups. Uh, so there's such a close family life that, you know, it brings similarities with human society and with other social animals. So I think that, that that's the magic for it. Out of 500 wolves left in the world, more than half of them live in packs here in the Ballet Mountains. And the best chance of finding them together was around a den. It's hard to get your head around how rare these animals are. And how easy they are yeah, to spot. Yes. And they're just, there's one, there's one, there's one. And also, I suppose it's incredible that if you see four of them, what is that? That's 1% of the entire world population. Yeah, getting close to that, yes. That's... Ooh. They just seem so confident, you can't imagine that these wolves are under any threat. So why are they so endangered? I think they're victims of their own success. They became specialised to live uh, in, in the Ethiopian highlands. And now the highlands are so small that they can, uh, can only accommodate uh, a few hundreds of them. Is this habitat under threat? Yes, Ethiopia is very densely populated and, and people are looking for areas where they can grow the crops and keep the cattle. So there is insidious pressures on the, on the habitat. Yeah. In such a drought-prone country as Ethiopia, can you blame people for wanting to live up here, where there's plenty of water and land to farm? Trouble is, this is a fragile paradise. If it's too intensively used, it could easily be destroyed. So with people slowly moving in here, the wolves are now effectively marooned right at the top of these mountains. The reality is, they have nowhere left to go. Well, that's the end of day one. I mean, an amazing day, we got to see loads of wolves. The downside of all of this is that lovely day, lovely sunny day, hello giant mole rats, hello wolves, hello birds in the sky. Um, minute the sunset, freezing. Um, actually, uh, happily in this tent, it's not too bad right now. Outside, it's minus two and falling. Um, and they predict it could go down to minus 12 or minus 15. Anyway, tomorrow, um, I think there's some horses involved. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> in fact, I didn't lie. I said I couldn't ride a horse, but apparently it's not difficult. I'll be the judge of that tomorrow, yeah, as will you, I'm sure. Anyway, I'm going to go to bed. Good night, animal lovers. <laughs> <laughs>